Welcome back to the INET Solution Member Protect Tutorials. In this video, we'll be talking about basic authentication. When you click on the basic authentication link, it takes you to a page that's very similar to the, our login page. Except in this case, it looks a little more realistic with a username and a password. Again, I'm going to use our default built-in admin user, whose name is admin and whose password is lowercase admin. If I click the login button, I log in. We can go back to our roles and privileges and we'll see that our uh, menu showed up so we know that we're logged in. I'm going to log back off and then I'm going to log, go back to the basic authentication. This time I'm going to type admin and a, a, the wrong password such as test. Log in. This time I am not logged in because authentication failed. If I go back to roles and privileges, it's going to tell me to log in because I've yet to log in. I failed that login. That's basically it when it comes to basic authentication. This, this is exactly the kind of authentication that we've all seen on hundreds of websites all over the place where we have to type in a username of some sort as well as a password and they better match otherwise it's not going to let us in. Again with most um, professional websites they're all out there live on the internet. Oops. If I type in a wrong password um, sometimes you'll often see one of these messages that says a username or password is incorrect and that's again to kind of throw off would-be hackers so they don't know well was the username right or was the password right or was any of them right like they you, the less you tell these guys the, the better and more secure your site is so let's go ahead and take a look at the code behind for this particular page again we'll skip the, uh, the query string information that drives the page and we'll go down to the on login function which is pretty simple the only difference between this and the uh, default page logon, I mean, we, we, we've already seen this line of code before. The only difference now is that we're actually doing an authentication by checking the password. We're accessing a new module within Member Protect, that being the authentication module. And the authentication module is pretty simple. It only contains a few functions to check passwords and, and the like, uh, the kind of functionality that we, we might require for simple, simple authentication. And so the check password function, all it requires is a username that the user types in, obviously, and then the password that the user types in. It'll check the hash of the password in the database to make sure that that username and password matches up. It is worth pointing out that we do not encrypt passwords in Member Protect. We hash them so that way they can no longer or never be decrypted again. Uh, we take this the value that they type in, we hash it, and we check the two hashes to make sure that they're the same. That way, not even you, the developer, will know what your user's passwords are. That can be a bit of a double-edged sword because if there's a problem and they can't access their account, you're going to have to have probably another page or some some logic in your system to allow users to, or allow admins at least, to change and update users' passwords, etc. Um, we also have support for temporary passwords and the like. So there's ways around these things, but at least you can, you can, you know, confidently tell your customers that your data is so secure that I, even I can't even get into it. So that's it. Um, we've only added one extra little set of uh, logic via Member Protect, and now we've actually got a real a real world simple but real authentication system that, that makes sure that the, the user is who they say they are. Um, that's about all there is to say when it comes to uh, a basic authentication. Next we'll be talking about risk-based authentication which focuses a little bit more on security and more advanced features of, of authentication.